Today and tomorrow, we are going to be dealing with empirical and molecular formulas. So, what we need to do first of all is to determine what is the difference between an empirical and a molecular formula. Could a formula be an empirical formula and a molecular formula at the same time? Absolutely. Does it have to be an empirical formula and a molecular formula? No. Okay. So, a formula could be molecular and empirical, but it does not have to be. Let me just show you some examples. Here's a guy we're dealing with right now in biology. C6H12O6. Anybody know what that is? It's a sugar, right, it is glucose. We're dealing with photosynthesis, cellular respiration. So, that is a sugar, C6H12O6. Now, as I look at that, can I reduce that formula? Can that be reduced? Well, I could take a 6 out of all of them, couldn't I? So, CH2O would be the re reduced version of that, right? Well, people, that right there is a molecular formula. That right there is an empirical formula. Now, let me show you something else, okay? Let's say I have a different formula. Let's say I have three sulfate. Okay. Iron three sulfate. Can I reduce that down? Can I reduce that down? No. Okay. I can't reduce that. That's the smallest form, right? So molecular formula and that is also an empirical formula What is that? Is that an empirical formula? A molecular formula? Both. That is a molecular formula. Why? Why is it a molecular formula? Because I can reduce it. If I would reduce it, the empirical formula would be that, right? So, can you see the difference between molecular and empirical? It's important because we're going to do some examples. 
I'll give you a second real quick here to write this down. Shouldn't take you very long. As I look at this, I have 88.8% copper, 11.2% oxygen. We just did percent compositions, right? Okay. Now, if I have a percentage, it's out of 100, correct? So, if I'm given percentages and need to calculate my empirical formula, I'm going to pretend that I have 100 grams of the substance. If I had 100 grams of this stuff, this substance, how much of that would be copper? 88.8 grams would be copper, right? How much of that would be oxygen? 11.2 grams would be oxygen, right? Now, in order, in order to find my empirical formula, I need to know moles of the substance. Moles of the substance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flux capacitor both of these substances to moles. We've done that real nice and easy. Draw my conversion box. I know that for copper, it's 63.5, isn't it? Is it 6.45? 5, 4, 6, dang it. Looking at the wrong one. Copper is 563546 grams of copper, one mole of copper. So when I do my math there, I convert copper to moles. So I take 88.8 .8 divided by 63.546, and I get 1.39. Seven mole of copper. I'm going to do the same thing for oxygen. I know that fifteen point nine 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 four grams of oxygen. It's one mole of oxygen. Grams cancel, my grams cancel. When I do my math, it comes out to zero point seven zero 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 mole of oxygen. That wasn't too tough. We've done this before, right? Now, what we are going to do is we're going to compare the moles of these two. All right? So we're going to compare the moles of these two. Which of those is the smallest number? The blue or the red? The blue, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to take the smallest number and divide both of these by the smallest number. Well, obviously, what's that going to be? One, right? Okay. And if I divide this... by that smallest number again. It's going to give me one point 
0.996. Now, is that value very, 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 very close to 2? Yes. So, we're going to say that this ratio is a 2 to 1 ratio, right? So when I write my empirical formula for this, I have copper, how many? Two, how many oxygens? One. So my empirical formula will be Cu2O. So, the new part, the new part of this process is only this part right here, where we take the moles of each and divide by the smallest value. Okay? I'll give you a second to write down the next value. Once again, I've given percentages here, so I'm going to say that 72.40 grams of iron and 27.60 grams of oxygen because if I have percentages, I'm just going to pretend like I have 100 grams of the substance. So, once again, I need to flux capacitor this into moles. So I put my conversion box up. I know that one mole of iron is 55 point six four five my grams of iron cancel so my label is it eight See, my eyes are going bad folks I'm sorry here eight four five I have trouble reading the periodic table when it's dark up here Okay. Plus, I need to put on my readers. So, 72.40 divided by 55.845 gives me 1.296 mole of iron. Oxygen, one mole of oxygen is 15.9994 grams. So I take 27.60 and I divide that by 15.9994. It gives me 1.725 mole oxygen. Now, what's my next step? I have to divide what? 1.296? I have to divide what by 1.296? Both of them. I take the lowest value, which you're right, Justin, 1.296, and I divide both of them by it. So what's 1.296 divided by 1.296? 1. 1.296 1. there on the bottom. So 1.725 divided by 1.296 gives me what? 1.33.
Now, is 1.33 close to 2? No. Is it close to 3? No. I'm kind of in the middle there. All right. So here's the rub. I'm in the middle. I can't just round that and say that that's a one-to-one -one ratio. That's entirely too far off to round. So I have to make that 1.33 into a whole number. How am I going to make 1.33 into a whole number? Graham? Well, I could do that, multiply it by 10. That would give me 13.3. Is that going to help me much? Okay. What do I need to do to get that to a number? Justin, what do you think? 130 it wouldn't help me rounding it down to 130. Okay, I don't want any decimals in my value. Okay, I'm going to get those decimals out of that value. Go ahead. Well, I could times it by 100. Okay, I don't need to times it by that much, though. Okay, what is 3,3? Three, three? It's one third, right? So if I multiply it by what? Multiply one-third to get it to a whole number. Three. Right? If I multiply one-third by three, I get one, right? So what if I take 1.33 times three? That gives me four, right? So I multiply that by three, and that gives me... Four. Is four a whole number? Absolutely. Now, what I did to that one, I've also got to do to this one. So what does that give me for this one? Three. So, when I come back to my empirical formula, and I didn't state this on the last one, I'm going to here. I've got iron and oxygen, a metal and a non-metal. I'm going to write my metal first, because we always write our metal for first. So Fe is what? 3. O is 4. So when I get that mixed number, that 1.33, which is too far to round down to 2, I have to multiply it by something to get it into a whole number. What if I would have something like 1.5? What would I need to multiply that by? By 2. Okay. 1.5 times 2 would give me 3, right? So what you're going to see is these are going to come out pretty consistent like that. Okay. Number-wise. Give you a second to write this one down. Okay, carbon two or excuse me, check. Point two three eight grams of carbon is burned in one liter of oxygen. The oxide of carbon which is formed weighs point eight seven two grams. What is the formula of the oxide? So we are taking carbon and mixing it with oxygen to form a compound. We don't know what the compound is yet, but we're going to look into what the empirical formula is. So, I know that 0 0.238 grams of that is carbon. I need to figure out how much of that is oxygen. How do I do that? How do I figure how much is oxygen? I take the total mass and I subtract how much of that mass is carbon. So the total mass is 0.872 and I subtract the mass of carbon 0.238 so that gives me 0 
three and four grams of oxygen. So this is a little bit different because I didn't have percentages. I need to take the masses that I was given in the problem. Once I have my masses, though, it's the same thing. I need to flux capacitor to moles. Carbon. Carbon is 12.0107 grams, one mole. I get my grams of carbon to cancel to leave me with moles. So, 0.238 divided by 12.0107 gives me 0 0.019. I do my calculation, I come up with 0 0.396 mole of oxygen. So, my next step is divide, divide by the smallest number. Now, what if I would have four different compounds? Four, di excuse me, check, check, four different elements. I would divide the smallest number by all of them, right? So I'm going to divide the smallest number, which is 0 0.0198. It's going to give me 1 there. And this gives me 1.9997. So that's going to give me... Two. So what's my empirical formula? What's my empirical formula? C O two. Yeah, Chris. Where did I get the point? Okay, I took the total mass of the oxide and I subtracted from it the 0.238. Okay, so the total mass of the oxide was 8 point or 0 0.872. Carbon was 2 point or 0 0.238 of that. So once I subtracted that, I got my 6.634. Any other questions for me? Okay, you have a WebAssign 5.5 that went active today. Now, people, you cannot do molecular formula yet. It is both. This WebAssign is both molecular and empirical. So if it says calculate the empirical formula, go ahead and do it. Leave the molecular formulas. We'll learn that tomorrow. All right?